But the debate is settled. Climate change is a fact. And when our children's children look us in the eye and ask if we did all we could to leave them a safer, more stable world with new sources of energy, I want us to be able to say, yes, we did. You know, we were talking about, uh, uh, with Austin Peterson about how misrepresenting the facts the president was last night in the State of the Union. Tom Harris joins us, executive director of the International Climate Science Coalition. Tom, good to have you. Yeah. The debate is settled. Uh, climate change is a fact. What do yeah. you think? Well, that sounds like something out of Dr. Zeus, you know, like, or no, Popeye. I am what I am. <laughs> <laughs> climate change is real. We hear that kind of statement all the time. Of course, climate change is real. It's, it's changed since the Earth was formed. I mean, climate change is on all planets with an atmosphere. Oh, the debate is settled, he says. Ah, oh, yeah, well, this book, uh, about a thousand pages of counter-settled uh, arguments, the non-governmental international panel on climate change, that's the nipccreport.com. You can actually see it on web. They would disagree completely with Mr. Obama. I mean, the bottom line is the science is anything but settled. We didn't forecast 17 years of no warming, so how can we forecast the future? We simply don't know. Okay, but it's against that kind of a background that he says he's going to have new standards on the amount of carbon pollution oh. that's out there. Presumably, it's informing his decision on Keystone XL pipeline. Yes, and it's also doing another thing which is very sad. The United States gets about 40% of its electricity from this. This is a piece of coal from uh, Kentucky, bituminous coal. They get 40% of their electricity. He wants to kill coal in the United States, which is very sad because the estimates are that Obama and, and his supporters already, by virtue of the kind of programs they're bringing in to kill coal to supposedly stop climate change, there's, the estimates now is that it'll cost over 2 million American jobs by 2020. In fact, pushing wind power and solar and this sort of thing, it's costing about $5 million per green job to American taxpayers. So this is a financial disaster. I, I actually, and I'd love your opinion on this, Tom, is coal still dirty? I thought they cleaned it all up now. Yes, they did. If you go back, say, to 1952 with the London smog and things like that, coal was, in fact, not properly burned, but they've cleaned it up enormously. You know, this piece of bituminous coal would be crushed up into a very fine powder. They use high-technology uh, pollution devices, and they make it, indeed, very, very clean. The trouble is coal puts out more carbon dioxide than other fuels like natural gas and oil. And so the argument is that we can help stop climate change by reducing our use of coal. But, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Even if the science behind Obama's statements was correct, and as I said, this big report shows that it's not, China is burning five times more coal per year than the United States for generating electricity. And you can be sure they're not going to pull back on their coal usage to, quote, stop climate change. Uh, well, he made that point. He said over the past eight years, the United States has reduced their total carbon pollution more yeah. than any other nation <laughs> on Earth. Is that a true fact? Yes, that is true. And that's largely because of the recession and many, many of the jobs <laughs> going point. to China. I mean, if you export your jobs and your factories to China, then sure, you're going to reduce all kinds of pollution and also you'll reduce carbon dioxide. But, you know, he used the term uh, carbon pollution three times in his speech and he really should go back to elementary school because carbon dioxide of course is the stuff of life it's anything but pollution well and he also made the connection between climate change and then drought and floods and i yeah, mean I know. he didn't say but, the polar vortex <laughs> but he might as well have well one of the things he did i printed out you know one of the screen captures here i know you can't see it on air but if you go to the white house webpage, you can watch his complete state of the union address and while he's speaking they put slides on the other side and the slide on the other side says, in 2012 alone, and then he talks about all these different records. Well, they didn't put, why didn't they put up in 2013? That was the most recent year. And that's because 2013 was unusually cold. And that wouldn't support his point of view, of course. So the bottom line is it's, it's mostly simply propaganda. If you actually look at major science reports, and you know this document, as I say, it has thousands of them, they come to the following conclusion. There's been no significant changes in the magnitude or intensity of extreme weather events in the modern record. And so, you know, we see a lot more of these events because people have cell phones and little video cameras and things like that. 13 times more infrastructure in the world than there was 100 years ago. So when a hurricane hits, of course, we're going to have more damage. But the incidence and frequency and severity of these events has not gone up. Okay, I'd love your opinion then, Tom. I mean, here he is uh, abusing science, uh, if oh, nothing yeah. else, uh, if not being using misleading science, potentially costing jobs. Why is he taking this approach? 
Well, I think that Obama's fundamental philosophy is to bring government control over more and more of the society. And the coal industry has been a very successful, very important free enterprise industry, okay? It's not government controlled. And if you can actually bring in more and more controls to push free enterprise industry out of the picture and bring in government subsidized wind turbines and solar power, then you're bringing the government into more and more control of the energy infrastructure. I think that the climate change thing is just an excuse for Obama to actually bring government control over more of the economy. Well, okay, I, I kind of half buy that, uh, and I get that um, that's the case. But look at oil, for instance. The Bakken and other regions have made uh, the United States almost, or at least North America, almost uh, energy independent. He can't control all that. Well, I think what he's trying to do is to bring it tighter and tighter. You know, after they nail coal, after they've killed coal, you can be sure they're going after natural gas, they're going after oil. And, you know, a funny story is that Sierra Club had big support from the natural gas sector for their Beyond Coal campaign. Okay, I think that's ironic because a little later, as they're succeeding, guess what they started? They started a Beyond Natural Gas campaign. So, indeed, one of the things the fossil fuel industry has to realize is environmentalists and Obama is in that camp. They want to get rid of all fossil fuels, and that's a big threat to the United States. It's a big threat to the world, because if you weaken your strongest superpower, you know, we're in big trouble, especially in Canada. Tom, we've got to leave it there. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, thank you. Tom Harris, joining us, Executive Director of the International Climate Science Coalition.